Hello YouTube, Raul here. In this video, I want to explore the built-in styling methods that React has to offer. So we are going to look at inline styling, CSS files, and CSS modules. This is going to be a video series, so make sure to subscribe to the channel because I'm going to release more videos on styling in React. We're going to look at CSS in JS options like style components and emotion. We're also going to look at component libraries like Material UI or Tailwind CSS. And we're going to see how we can integrate those in our React apps. Also, I'm going to try to do in ev for every solution, I'm going to try to do a pros and cons list or at least try to give you their main downsides. So why you shouldn't use them and my, op my personal opinion on them, whether you should use it or not. Let's get started. I have a project here set up with React. I've cleaned up the files that we're not going to use and added some small components. There's nothing really going on here. I just have a header which has an H2, a footer which has another H2, a main component which has an H1. You can see them here on the right side. And in my app, I also have a button that toggles between true and false in my state because we're going to look at how we can modify our styling based on our app's state. So let's get started. The first method uh, you can use to add styling in your React app is inline styling. So you just go to one of your tags like this H1 right here. You write style and then inside of an object, you write your uh, your styling. So the only difference between this and CSS is that you have to use camel case. Something like when you write styling attributes in normal vanilla JavaScript. So I can write background color in camel case and maybe Rebecca purple, let's say. And if I save, you can see that my hello world got a background color. So this is the first method you can use. Also, uh, going with the same method, you can put this in a constant. So constant, let's say h2 style, it's gonna be an object and we're actually gonna copy this from here, put it in an object and add h2 style. And let's also make the color white. And you can see the color changed. Now, the downside to using inline styling like this, I'm going to mention two of them here. One of them is that you can't actually write media queries for these because there is no, you just attach the styling to one of your elements. And you can't also uh, do animations, for example, because you can't define your animations in inside of these objects. And another downside to this is that it uh, affects the performance of your app a little bit because objects are always recreated when the component re-renders. So inline styling, it exists, but you probably shouldn't be using it in your app, except maybe when you're testing something, want to change something really quick right there, but probably you shouldn't be using it. So we're going to the next method. So let's comment this out. I'm going to also comment this H1 and I'm going to put another one here with the same text inside. I'm going to have this all the code for this video up on my GitHub. Link will be in the description below. That's why I want to comment everything out so you can have all the code from the whole video. Okay. Next method is using CSS files. So when you use create react app, it generates an app.css and an index.css. You can use them. I've deleted the index.css and just left the app.css because I don't like to have both of them. But you can go into app.css, which is imported into app.js. 
and just type normal CSS right here. So you can use class names. This let's use main. Let's do main header here, for example, and do a background color of also again Rebecca purple, a color of white. Now this you can after you have imported your file, you can go on any HTML tag. And instead of writing just class like you normally would in HTML, you write class name because class is a reserved word in, in JavaScript, so you can't use it here. But you, you can use class name. So main header. And you can see our styling is back on our header. So you can use, you can put all your styling for your whole app inside of this app.css file if you would like. You can also do animations, transitions. This is a normal CSS file. So anything you can do in CSS, you can do here. Nothing changes. One of the downsides to using just one CSS file like this is if you have a big app, this file can get thousands of lines long. So that's not nice because it takes away from the from one of the core concepts of React, which is uh, making small reusable components. One huge CSS file doesn't do that. But a solution to that is to have multiple CSS files and to name them after each of your components. So for example, I'm gonna make another CSS file right here and I'm gonna, co gonna call it main.css. Here in main, you can see I just have a header, which says I am the main. And here I can just make a class, which is called, let's say, header. And we're going to have background color of red. And now we go to main.js. We import the main.css. And now we can add the class name here, which is going to be header. I don't have the main.cs. Oh, I mistyped the path. It's like this. And now we have a red background to this header. But one of the disadvantages that this has is if you have a big app, this, even if I import main.css only in main.js, it's available throughout my app. So this header class or this main header class that I have in my app.css is available anywhere, not only in the component that I have imported it. So let's say if I go now into header and just write the class name here without importing anything, if I do main header we're gonna get a purple background to it. But if I do header, then I'm gonna get a red background to it. Now, if you have a really big app with multiple people working on the same code base, it can happen that two, the cla class names could clash. So for example, you, you have a main header in app.js and a main header in app dot in main dot css so let's rename this to main header and now you can see if i go in main and name this main header everything is red so we we lost this class here in app dot css we could make sure our class wins by typing important here but this is not a solution in a big code base that you always go everywhere and mark stuff as important because you have two different class classes with the same name. So this is not really nice. We're going to look at how we can fix that with CSS modules. But before we use CSS modules, I want to show you how you can change the state based on change the styling based on the state. So we have this state right here, which toggles when we click the button. And if we want to, let's say, change some colors when we press that button, 
we can use this state right here. So I'm gonna first let me show you how you could do it with inline styling because that worked before. So I, I'm gonna bring back this inline style that I had before. So it's it's the one let's make it blue with the blue background so you know which one it is. And we're gonna change the the color of the text right here based on this state. So we're gonna check if state is true, then we're gonna make the color yellow, else we're gonna make it green. And now if we press this button, you can see the styling toggles. Okay, so that's pretty good. This is with inline styling, but I told you, you shouldn't be using it. So let's go back to commenting this one and the h12 and see how you can do that with classes now i'm gonna also change it here in the main.css i'm gonna go back with this header and this is also gonna be a header so let's leave it like we had it before and in header.js we're gonna remove this class name so now we have one in app.css and one in main.css. Going back to app, let's say we want to change this one from the app.css. So we want this hello world to toggle its background color based on the state. The only way to do this if you're using CSS file is something like this. So we have a constant which is gonna be called header style and we're gonna set it to main header like the exact name of the class we have now and we're gonna check if if the state is true so if the state is true then we are going to add to this to this style name so header style plus equals and we have to add a space here and let's say color green we're gonna have a class called color green and instead of just giving it the string here as the class name we are going to give it the header style now at the moment nothing happens because so if this is on this hello world right here so on this one if I toggle it, you can see nothing happens because color green doesn't actually exist as a class until now. So let's create that color green. And here we're going to set the color to green. Now, if I toggle it, you can see the color toggles, but I don't like how this looks like this is not really nice. You don't want to be concatenating strings every time if you have multiple places like this. But for the built-in styling methods, if you don't want to use inline styling, this is the only way to, to do it like this. So there you go. In one of the next, in the next videos, actually, we're going to look at multiple solutions for example in style components you will be able to pass props to to your styling and change the styling in your style sheets for example but we'll get there in the next video if you remember previously in this video i mentioned about the name clashes in uh, in our files the solution that react has to offer is called css modules these modules will scope the CSS to only the files that they are imported. Let me show you what I mean by that. We're gonna use this header and this footer for this. We don't need those other files anymore right now. So I'm gonna create a new file called header.module.css. So you have to add this .module so that React knows that this is a CSS module. And we're also gonna create a footer.module.css. And in both of them, we're gonna create a header class. If you, if you remember, we also had the header class in main.css. 
but this is not gonna matter. We're gonna create create a header class. Inside of this, let's put, let's say, a padding of 40 pixels, background color of salmon, and color, let's leave it black. So this is gonna be the header inside header.css. And we're gonna go into the footer module. And here we're also gonna declare a header class because I'm gonna put it on my h2. But this one, I just wanna check. So on this one, we're gonna do a padding of 15 pixels a background color of green and color white. So you can see these two class, class names have the same, these two are the same class name, but we are gonna import them differently. So we are gonna import, here we have to name them. So I'm gonna name it classes from, and we are in header, so we're gonna get header.module.css so we're not going to Im import the css file normally but we're going to import it like an object and now we can go into the h2 and add a class name which is going to be classes and classes.header and you can see the styling got applied to our header component. Now we're gonna do the same for the footer. So we're gonna import the classes from footer.module.css and on the h2 I'm gonna put the class name classes.header. And you can see the styling is different. So just to show you that we actually have the same code. So here on the left side, we have the header and it's all the same. The only different thing is the CSS file that we're importing from. And inside of the CSS files, there are the different stylings. This happens because let's look in the browser now. So let's go open the dev tools and here, let me make it just a little bigger so you can see better. Here, let's look at how our styles have been created. So here, the first one and the last one are the ones that matter. So I am the header, which is the in our header.js. You can see it that our class name is not header as we named it. It's the component, the name of the class that we defined, and a hash. So if we define two classes with the same name, they won't clash. Here in the footer, it's called footer underscore header and then another hash. So this way, your classes, your class names will never clash. So this, this was the built-in styling that you can do with with what React has to offer out of the box. For the rest of the videos in this series, we're gonna have to look at some libraries and packages, which are gonna help us write CSS or actually with some of them, we won't even have to write CSS at all. So the next video in the series is gonna be about style components. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to be notified when that comes out. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below if you did and if I should make more introductory videos like this. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.